Thank you for joining us. We are walking to the cross. We're going through the last week that Jesus walked on the earth before his crucifixion. And we have seen all through the days uh, the different steps that he took. Today is Thursday. On Thursday, that's the traditional Passover meal. And Jesus, being a strict Jew, was going to be observing that Passover meal with his followers, his close followers, just the 12. And so they spent that day preparing. The Passover had been a tradition for thousands of years. It started back and it represents when the Israelites were held captive in Egypt and Moses was bringing them out of captivity. On the last plague, the plague of the death of every firstborn, they were instructed to sacrifice a lamb and to take the blood of that lamb and put it on the doorposts of their home and the angel of death would pass over them. Every year since that time, they would celebrate that victory and that glory given to God and they'd remember that Passover lamb, there was a sacrifice that saved them. Jesus knew that he was that Passover lamb. He was preparing for his final time with his disciples. We call it the Last Supper for obvious reasons, but it was actually the Passover. So he sent his disciples to go prepare a room, and the room had to be within the city limits of Jerusalem. They couldn't get more than a half a mile outside the city or they wouldn't be clean. They wouldn't be able to participate uh, in the temple and the sacrifices. And so with that, they go into a room. Now, when they go into a room to prepare to have a meal, there's usually a servant or someone there that would wash their feet because, of course, they've been walking in sandals and their feet are dirty, and they're going to recline together. But somebody dropped the ball. There was no servant. At that point, Jesus does the unthinkable. He takes off his robe and he wraps a towel around him and he takes a water basin. And here he is, the leader, the Messiah, the Son of God. They know this. And he bows down and begins the humble task of washing their feet. Many of them protest, but Peter, of course, protests the loudest because that's who Peter is. He says, don't just wash my feet, wash my whole body. And Jesus begins to teach all the disciples that to be a leader means to be a servant. And Jesus lived that out. As they prepare, they sit at the table, and Jesus begins to introduce a new covenant and a new command. Something new is coming. This is it. It was prophesied in the Old Testament that one day there would be a new covenant. This is the new covenant. And that one command, love each other as I've loved you. He takes the bread, and he breaks it, and he reminds them that this is going to be his body that is broken. He takes the cup and pours it and says, this is my blood poured out for you. Join us tonight as we have communion together, separately, of course, in our homes. And we go through this same ritual of realizing the sacrifice that Jesus made for you and I to be able to walk with him. During the supper, he makes a statement. He says, one that has dipped his hand into this bowl is going to betray me tonight. They all ask who it is, but we all know who it is. It's Judas. He looks at Judas in the eye. He says, go do what you have to do. Judas slinks out that night and goes and tells the religious leaders, you can capture him tonight, you can arrest him. They retire after dinner to a place called Gethsemane. And in Gethsemane, Jesus, knowing that the end is near, begins to pray to the Father, asking the Father if there's any other way that sin can be forgiven, if there's any other way that these people become part of the family. Whatever it is, God, is there any other way? And the answer was no. So Jesus prepared to be arrested. And that's how we end Thursday night. Join us tomorrow.
You're working 